What's good? What's gravy? What's wavy, baby? Happy New Year's if you're into that. I'm not a, I'm not really into all that stuff. But hey, it's a new year. Same old me. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Disclaimer alert, I'm not a producer, any kind of musical genius or anything. This is just my take on what I enjoy. So if it's a bit incohesive, it's because I'm just a fan at the end of the day. Another disclaimer, this is my buddy's band. That doesn't mean I'm just rainbows and butterflies here. I am giving my honest opinion. If they sucked, I wouldn't be bothering to do a review. So there's that. All right, so let's get to the review then. If you like rock, alternative, or heavy metal, do yourself a favor and go check out the new album by the band Red Abides, The Red Abides, entitled Forever. I don't see myself doing very many album reviews just because it's hard for me to find artists these days that I really feel like listening to their whole album. So I was pleasantly surprised listening to this album from start to finish. One of my favorite genres of music growing up was alternative rock. I loved the emo side of this genre. Also, you had guys who were like Blink-182 occupying the same space as, say, Audio Slave and Chris Cornell. It's a wide range of sounds, messages, and ideas. What I like about this album in particular is that they didn't just say, oh, we're making a metal album, so everything's going to be heavy and hardcore as crap. The transitional tracks, the slow intros that build into intense vocals and drums and guitar riffs, that is something I really enjoyed. Make no mistake, this is a very metal rock album, but you see the depth of the artists when you see them genre blend, and I absolutely loved it. The production is, in my opinion, very high quality. This is what I love with the advancements in technology these days. You don't have to be super connected to create something incredible anymore. Back in the day, you had certain, let's call them gatekeepers, who were deciding who was going to get the opportunity to blow up. The paradigm has now shifted and we control a lot more of our destinies and the Red Abide Abides understands this. This isn't some lazily put together piece of art. It's well executed and there wasn't any part where I thought, oh yeah, they're not getting the backing of, you name the big media company. This is simply put, exceptional independent music. If I knew anything about sound production, I would add some really insightful stuff here, but I barely know how to make my videos sound good, so yeah. One thing about albums that I can listen to from start to finish that I still don't fully understand is the order of the tracks. Um, I don't fully understand it, but things have to flow. You can't hear the same type of sound redundantly or you'll get bored. They did this really well in my opinion. An example for me is tracks 7, 8, and 9. Track 7, In Blood, is a chord heavy song with slower tempo where Pete keeps his voice low and gravelly. They could have jumped straight into another metal song right here, but I enjoy track 8, Before the Dawn. It's a transitional song, 96 seconds of piano, violin, and soft choral vocals. A very lovely track on its own. This almost operates as a bit of a palate cleanser for me. My mind can kind of relax again. The wavelengths get longer. Then we jump right back into a very fast tempo track that sounds very different from track seven. I gotta stop saying very. So they switch things up and you hardly notice because track eight really walks you to track nine. Track nine is Let You Go and this chorus is one of my favorites on the album. And I guess that's what I enjoy a lot when the verse sounds very different from the chorus and when the bridge goes crazy. I met the guitarist, Tony. Do not know him, but from my memory, this dude was disgusting on the guitar, and you get a bit of that in this song on that bridge. That kind of ties me into my next thought, which is talent. I met Pete like 15 years ago. Back then, he was crazy on the drums and keys, and he probably, by now, probably knows all the other instruments, so screw you, Pete. I don't know how the minds of my musically inclined friends work, but I appreciate y'all sharing your gift. I'll stick to stinging in the shower. So Pete is credited with drums, vocals, and keys. My only critique, and it's not really a critique, I would like to see more complicated compositions on the drums. But when you got a full-time job and kids, that's just me being greedy. Apostolus, aka Tony, is on the guitar shredding. My favorite solo is probably in the song Forever. If you skip to the bridge, I believe it's called the bridge, still learning the terminology, around three minutes, 30 seconds in, he starts to let loose.
My only critique here is again a selfish one. I don't think I would have minded some more guitar solos, but again, there's not a time where I felt it was lacking at all. I guess I just want to see some more solos in the next album, maybe. And the only one I haven't met is Christopher, who plays bass. I apologize, Chris. Bass is literally also the one instrument that I can't seem to hear a lot because I think my brain gives credit to the bass drum because I'm like, no way, that's a string instrument. It just sounds like a drum. But... Hopefully you guys can put together a music video and we get to see all the skills on display. I'll talk on the theme, which is totally in my own mind. It's completely subjective and I could get it totally wrong. So I'll keep it simple just because I haven't had a chance to read the lyrics to everything. And with metal, no one's got time to enunciate, okay? But overall, what I kept hearing through heavy metal screams is a message of hope for what the future can be with the somber awareness that we have a long road ahead. We are our own masters of the universe. Not some weird talking heads on TV who say, you have to hate your neighbors because they look or worship differently than you. Now that ties me into another aspect of this album I really enjoyed. Track four, Serenity, is one of my favorites. The first half of the track is The Serenity to Prayer. If you don't know what it is, go Google it. I no longer believe in God like I did when I was younger, more agnostic, but The Serenity Prayer was, is the only prayer that's really stuck with me. It was the second tattoo I got, I think. It encompasses so much in just a few lines, but it speaks to me. My favorite movie is Interstellar, and what is Michael Caine's character always quoting? Do not go gentle into that good night by Dylan Thomas. And how does this album close out? reading that poem and another of my favorite tracks to end the album, Rage, which for me is all about not giving up and continuing to fight for what is right and good in this world. Receive the light inside. Rage. A lot of a lot of people against that for some reason i don't know why so i don't know when art connects to you in these ways i found out people call them synchronicities i don't know why i'm putting quotes on it that's what the term is it makes the art feel more profound it makes you feel seen and it's also a good reminder hey get your shit together and get moving time is finite after all maybe that's just a message for me Another one of my favorite tracks is Break the Circle. I wasn't sure if this was a reference to the stained album Break the Cycle, but that was one of my favorite albums, and whenever I see people just repeating the same unhealthy mistakes they were taught, I just always think in my head, just break the damn cycle. Oh my god, just break it. And that's why I enjoy this song so much, too, because that chorus is just so damn nasty. Because that's all I feel like screaming at people sometimes. Break the circle, please! Let You Go is another banger. It takes some of us a long time to realize love is sometimes letting go of people. Whether you're bad for them or they're bad for you, sometimes you just gotta let go. I love the line where Pete's saying, is it enough to say I never meant to hurt you? Is there another way or will we never be again? Can't lie, I hate apologies when you can tell the person has no interest in changing. Let's just throw up the deuces and keep it moving. And maybe it's not a person. Like for me, I gotta let go of drinking this year. It's just facts.
So think of it this way. The fact I can analyze this album so much shows just how good, how damn good it is. Do yourself a favor, go listen to their album. I listened to it on YouTube Music, but I believe they got it everywhere. And support local, okay? Fuck the conglomerates and their greedy overlords. Until next time, guys. Deuces. Yeah, I guess Apple Music is a bit of a conglomerate overlord. But whatever, man. Streaming doesn't pay. Screw them. Selfish, greedy bastards.